This is a 2015 Nissan Altima with the VQ engine. It's a V6. I want to go over the variable charging system for the alternator. Um, we are experiencing a big time problem with Nissan alternators right now. The remanufactured alternators are junk. I've heard horror stories of shops having to put upwards of seven alternators on before they find a good one. Um, these things aren't that easy to put on, especially on this model. Uh, our shop in particular, I know of one Maxima that had to have four. This particular car I'm working on here, another guy in the shop literally just put this alternator on and thank God he drove the car. The guy that put it on is a very competent guy. Uh, there's no doubt it was installed correctly. He did his homework. Uh, he did testing as it should. He drove the car afterward and the alternator failed before it even was delivered to the customer. Uh, it was an intermittent type deal. So um, I'm basically babysitting the car to try to get it to act up, to put a nail in the coffin for yet another failed reman alternator. And these are Nissan reman alternators. So I don't know what's going on there. Hope they get it fixed. If you work at a Nissan dealer and you watch this, you probably already know this. But if you're an independent guy and you are going to use a Nissan reman and it happens to come back, um, very rarely do I question Nissan OE parts, but uh, these alternators are um, definitely struggling. So let me get to it. This video is going to be about a little bit of a case study, but kind of a way to look at uh, the variable system and make sure it's not the problem and it is the generator or the alternator. So this is a pretty standard diagram. You've got your big wire here. That is what goes to the battery that carries all your current back to the battery. Um, this is your sensing circuit. Uh, this wire needs to be 100% load tested and make sure there is no resistance in this wire here. This wire here is for our charge light. So you have source voltage here and alternator output here. Obviously if this gets less than this, you have a power, you have a ground, and you'll turn your battery light on. This wire here is the signal from the IPDM. It's a pulse width signal. It's negative duty controlled and it will lower or raise the output of the generator. Um, this is a little bit older system. This alternator can function on its own. So if this system, if this wire were disconnected shorted to ground, open, uh, this alternator will still function. Uh, it'll, it'll run basically like a normal alternator, a, a non-smart alternator, we'll just call it. And that's good to know because that's, that's uh, a key to diagnosing whether this system's bad or this system's bad. And uh, I'm going to go over some of that. So our car's ECU, it looks at a lot of inputs. Um, the battery current sensor and the uh, ice machine's uh, working good. The battery current sensor and the temperature sensor, it's basically around the negative side of the battery cable on, on this car. It's feeding some inputs to the ECU. The ECU's making some decisions, sending it down the can and basically telling, hey, control this alternator for me. Um, I'm in the parameters to either knock some of the charging out of it or boost a little charging to it. Uh, the ECM is looking at a lot of things. I'm sure it's looking at underhood temp, load, AC signals. Uh, this car is electric power steering or hydroelectric power steering. It's probably looking at inputs from that. There's a lot of things that go into that decision uh, other than what you see here. So I'm, I've got some videos. I'm going to edit in a couple of small videos where I was actually in the car uh, commanding this system to work, and I'm just going to I'm just going to edit those right into this. Then after those two videos, I'm going to show you some scan data um, of things to look out for uh, if you're testing this system 
and you don't realize it's operating, it could kind of lead you down a bad road. Um, just like with anything, we are struggling with these alternators, but that doesn't mean that every car that comes in with a charging problem, it's a bad alternator. I mean, nine out of 10, sure, but I've seen other issues. Um, I don't have the data to back up what I'm saying, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but I've seen other issues within this circuit and even one with this circuit um, create charging issues. So, and alternators were misdiagnosed. So let me get the videos up, check those guys out, and then we'll go over some, uh, some scan data and I'll give you a few tips on what to look for. So all I'm gonna do here is we're gonna watch battery voltage while I command the duty up with the scan tool. There's 10%. Notice the voltage dropped. You see the square wave on the scene. I'm back probed at the IPDM. I go up. The more I command the duty, the more voltage I get. But just remember, a low voltage means it commands it low. So I'm up at 40%, so I'm up to 13. I go up to 80 and 90. You can see it jumps up to 15. And then 100%, it kind of acts like the wire shorted to ground, so it reverts back to a normal alternator. Um, it's not 100% computer controlled. This alternator has three wires. There's only one wire that does this. The ECM makes a decision, sends signals to the IPDM over CAN. The CAN's the muscle. This signal is coming out of the IPDM. For any non-scopers out there, if you don't have a scope yet and you have a voltmeter, if your voltmeter has a duty frequency setting, set it up, go to a negative trigger and uh, the percent, and I'll keep you focused there. And I'm just gonna add some percentage just like I did with the scope. Uh, you can see the duties going up. So you can actually test this system live if you don't believe your scan tool, which uh, I don't fault you if you don't. So I'll run it all the way up to 100. Uh, of course, the voltmeter is going to show that. It's close. Uh, remember, a voltmeter only samples about four times a second. But at least it'll let you know that the system is can be commanded. You don't have to rely on the scan tool alone. And there's back down to... Scan tool shows 10, voltmeter shows 8, and then when it says ouch, it's at zero. All right, this is a this is that 15 Altima I just showed you the diagram on, and I'm this is just scan data here. I'm using the Snap-on Zeus, and we're using the ShopStream. Uh, it's pretty good graphing. I love the graphing. I know you've heard me say that before. So I'm looking at battery voltage here, and I'm looking at generator duty cycle. Uh, this is commanded, and this part of the waveform is how it's supposed to work. So we'll start with the good, or not waveform, excuse me, it's the scan data. So up here, where I've got this cursor here, we can see that I'm commanded nothing. At 0% command, this alternator acts like a normal alternator. It is uh, internally regulated. It, is, has, it has no influence from the computer at all. And you can see it's charging at 13.7. Not a problem. You lay a voltmeter across that thing, you're gonna see 13.7. Now I come across here. Now, it jumps up right here to 59% duty controlled, and I'm at 13.2. And what this thing does is as the duty cycle lessens, this number gets smaller, it brings the voltage down, but it does it incrementally. You wouldn't want to all of a sudden go from 13.2 to 11.9. Uh, that, would, that would cause the engine to surge. Uh, alternators really take a lot of power from the engine, and you wouldn't believe how much that engine would surge. So what it does, and you can see, it gradually ramps this thing down. And as it's ramping it down, you see up here the charging voltage starts coming down. 
and it's pretty plain to see and then it starts really coming down so I'm at 29% it's bringing me down to 12 and then you get down here it kind of bottoms out at 15% and I'm down under 12 volts now why do you think that would do that let's say you're riding down the road you're going at interstate speed 70 miles an hour um, it's a nice fall day you got the wind is down the headlights aren't let's say you don't even have the radio on you got very little load on the car you don't really need that alternator up here zinging at you know 13 14 volts so this alternator or this computer is going to say you know what we don't need all this power so I'm going to pull that alternator out of the loop a little bit, take a little load off the crankshaft, see if we can get a little bit more fuel economy out of this thing. So, and that's what it does. I think this system uh, brings voltage or charging down more than it tells it to go up. Because this world we live in is driven by EPA as far as the auto industry. Uh, this is 2015, so this is actually old technology compared to what Nissan has out there now. These are cars right now that will be showing up in um, independent shops. So just beware. Like I said, this is how it's supposed to work. So I'm down here under 12 volts. And I'm at 15%. So something told the computer, hey, that's a little low, so let's start ramping this thing back up. So that's exactly what it does. It's ramping it up. It doesn't jump from 15 back up because it would lug the motor down and it it may even stall probably a four cylinder not a six so here i go back up i'm at 48 percent my charging voltage is coming on back up to where we like and then it maxes out and then it goes back to zero and now we've got a normal alternator again 13.7 so basically no input we got 13.7 well that was the good now let's look at the bad same car this is the car that has uh it's getting ready to get another alternator put on it where did my cursor go there it is so here we go we're at 37.5 and we're at 12.8 so as before it starts ramping it back up and you can see here it's behaving and it gets it back up to where it should be if it's a normal, if it's charging normally. So then the system cuts out. I'm at zero, I'm at 13.6, and then we go along here for a while, and then all of a sudden, look. My battery voltage really starts dumping. 12.6. I'm at zero command here. At zero command, it should be up here. So that tells me right there that the smart part of this system does not have a problem. That ice machine is banging. I just put a new pump in there. Um, so that tells me that the smart part of this system is working as it should. This alternator is at 12.2 with zero command. This alternator is no good. Um, obviously, you need to verify your other two wires that I showed you and just make sure that all that's intact. And if it is, and you have a waveform like this or a scandal like this, this is this alternator's failed um, so that was me catching this car failing now I want to show you this system and this is a tip here let me find my other uh, this system will activate while the car is idling so this is where I want you guys to be careful so right here I have engine speed generator duty in battery voltage so you can see I'm at 775 rpms idle I have um, no command and I'm at 137 everything is happy so I rev this motor up a little bit you can see I'm up to four grand nothing everything's still normal so revving this car up I'm up to five grand right there kind of juicing the alternator up a little bit kind of running a little extra off into the battery so I let the car come back down to idle if you were to put a voltmeter across this battery right now or test it with some sort of a little Medtronic's deal or whatever tester you've got it would probably test good as far as the alternator charging but let's say this system starts doing this 
I'm up to 54%. Notice my source voltage is coming down. So let's get right in here. I'm at 38%. The car is still idling. 12.9. So you do a routine check, lay a voltmeter across this battery, and you see 12.9. That should raise a flag. Your, your car should be idling over here. 13, 8, 14, 2, good numbers. All of a sudden, you don't know how this system works. You don't know what's going on. All you see is 12.8, 12.9. You lay a tester on that thing to check this alternator, you're liable to get a false fail. You might even go as far as sticking an alternator on this car. And it's not the alternator. It's the system working. So my advice would be, if you have a scan tool, plug it in. Look at the data pid. If the data pid says zero, your voltage should be what I would consider normal. If your data pid says anything other than zero, especially a low number, if this number down right here was at 10 or 20, this thing would be around 12.1 or 12.2. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is just be careful. These cars are out there, uh, definitely on the Nissan side. Um, I'd hate to see you get in there and check this thing and get a false fail, is all I'm saying. And then get a reman put on the car, and then you've created a problem because chances are the reman is going to be junk. Um, this is a V6. It doesn't seem to me in, in the testing I've done that this same car with a four-cylinder in it isn't as active. It seemed like the system is not as active. Maybe the four banger just gets better gas mileage, so they're being more aggressive with the alternator on the six. Um, the four cylinder has the same system. It's just that one wire that comes from the IPDM is sometimes sky blue, sometimes it's light green. The ECM, or I'm sorry, the uh, service manual said this car was light blue or sky blue. It actually wasn't, it was light green. But um, pretty easy to figure that out. Like I said, beware of this. This engine's idling. This system is active, and it will pull the battery voltage down. So you can either scan it, check for your ver value here. You, if it's up and you really need to test it now, you could go into active test, command it. If you have a tool, a scan tool that can do that, you could command it to zero, test it then. Or if you're feeling real frisky, you could depin the the wire and i have done that before for diagnostic reasons so anyways that's kind of the tip uh like i said we're at 850 we're at zero and we're back to 13.6 so it looks like a good number so uh just watch out for that rabbit hole um be careful with nissan reman alternators uh, i may even update this video if i find out why they're going bad but you guys be good thanks for watching and uh, look out for those giant potholes in the road. Probably don't want to see that. Where's my button?